All right, good morning. Um, in today's video, we're going to build what I like to call the top spiral notebook. And uh, so right there, a little notebook fits in your pocket. Um, you can do any kind of decorations or whatever you want on this. It's a blank canvas. Um, but the little notebook it holds is that one right there. Um, I love this thing because these little notebooks are cheap. I think four of them at Walmart's like less than a dollar. Um, they're a little five inch by three inch, uh, just spiral bound note paper. Got lines on it and stuff. Mm, hard to see, my light's too bright. There we go. Um, so they're just great little notepads to carry. Uh, in this video, I am gonna, I'm gonna basket weave mine and I'm gonna do a little bit more decoration than just a big square of it. Um, so, and I'll use actually the template that we're going to make this out of to, 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 to do that. So, yeah. Um, we'll get started because I've got several other little videos to make today. Um, this one won't be a very long video because it's a very small project um, in comparison to uh, some of the other projects that we do. So um, we'll uh, open the template set here and I'm going to take the camera and push it down towards my desk because you don't need to see my pretty face, you need to see my pretty desk. So, in the template set is three pieces. That's what you cut your little pocket out of. And these two are like a puzzle. You put them together, and that is the outside piece of the notebook. Okay? Um, it says that you can cut two of these out of two to three ounce, and one of these out of anything from four to six ounce. Uh, it says it right there on the template. And I will tell you a little secret, if you're using like four to five ounce, you could also cut these out of four to five ounce also, um, because it doesn't really make a huge difference with this particular project. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm going to grab my cutting board here and I'm going to go ahead and cut out uh, some pieces. But first off, oh, anytime that we uh, make a template into one of these little puzzle pieces, it's because of shipping. This right here is a lot likely to, less likely to get broken in the mail than this big long piece right here because believe me the postal service and ups both work very hard to destroy our templates all right so these little puzzle pieces the best thing you can do is take once you've put them together i normally use masking tape but i don't have any in my office right now and i just put a piece of tape across there it makes it very rigid it makes it easy to pick up it makes it easy to use i mean even if i turn it over um, it normally won't fall apart. Um, if it's something that you have somewhere to store this as a whole piece, then hey, I would go ahead and tape it together on both sides and, and call it a day. So that's what I do to hold those things together while I'm cutting them out. All right, got to grab my cutting board here. I need to get me a new cutting mat for this new countertop here. All right, um, this is a ugly piece of leather. It was a like a shoulder or something. I mean, it was um, just kind of some scrap that we ordinarily wouldn't sell to a customer. So I use them in all my videos um, for a couple of reasons. One, it's that means I'm not you know ruining good leather just to make silly projects for videos. And then two, um, I like to show people that no matter what piece of leather you have available to you, no matter what tannery it's from, no matter how ugly it might be. Um, it's still usable. There's still lots of stuff you can do with it. Um, there's a big old huge fat roll right here. There's a weak spot down here, so I do have to stay away from that. Um, big fat roll, a couple of rub marks throughout here. But I'm going to do some basket weaving on this, and you won't see any of that stuff when I'm done. So there you go. All right, uh, it is a piece of four to five ounce. And I've got my handy dandy little scalpel here, and I'm just going to take and I'm going to cut around the perimeter of this big rectangle that we taped together. Being very careful not to move the template while I do it. Alright. Missed my line a little bit there, which is kind of funny because that's what templates are for is to Make it to where you can't miss your line. Alright, almost 
holes there. All right, so um, while we have the cutting mat out, might as well just go ahead and cut out the two other pieces here out of this. All right, now I personally, um, I actually intend to line this, okay? Since I've got to sew all the way around it anyway, I'm going to take some of this leather and glue to the back of it. It's just uh, two to three ounce. I'm going to glue to the back of it and um, it'll just make it a, you know, a little bit more finished. Um, you don't have to do this by any means, um, but it does, like right there, it, it makes it a more finished product if you're able to do that. Now, let's say you don't have a nice giant piece that you can cut that out of. You could always just glue a piece, you know, I would go say a half an inch um, under the pocket on this side and this side and then skive down the edges of your liner before you glue it on and then it'll look like the entire thing is lined. Um, again, all of this is just optional, but I really like lined leather it just it looks much nicer than just uh you know especially if you have something with a fuzzy back or something like that so um the pocket piece now this one was cut out this was my prototype so it doesn't have any fancy scallops right here like the template has in it now if i can find my template on my desk seriously where'd i put it <laughs> Ah, under the leather. Okay, now look, this scallop right here. Now if I was to put that underneath the paper here, it would be like that. And if I do that, then the problem is that you risk the, run, the chance that when you're writing on this, that you have a hard time with that little cutout. So on the backside piece, I'm actually just gonna cut out a rectangle um, and I'll show you how I do it, but I'll cut around three sides of it and then I'll just flip it around and cut that fourth side and I'll leave that little fancy scallop off. Um, and then when I make my front pocket, I'll put that scallop on there just because that part will be seen and I, I think it looks a little prettier than just a plain line like this, this prototype one has on it. Okay. All right. So, uh, again, this is two to three ounce veg tan. Uh, the piece I'm currently using is uh, the russet leather from uh, Wicked Craig. Absolutely my favorite leather when I'm stamping. And like I said, today I am going to be stamping in a, uh, a little bit of basket weave because I need to practice with it. I did a project the other day with basket weaving and realized real quickly that my weaving skills are not where they should be or used to be even. So I'm gonna cut these three sides out. And then, like I said, get that out of the way. I'm just gonna flip this around and I'll line the, the tops of the, uh, the scallops up with uh, the edge of what I cut out. Okay, and then that leaves this back end where I can just cut it straight across and it's gonna fit just fine. Okay, and so that'll be my back piece. Now my front piece, I will cut out with the scallop, like I said. And if you wanted, you could even use an extra one of these and make it like an exterior pocket on your little notebook to hold business cards or something like that. Um, I'd probably make it a little bit shorter um, because if you got business cards way down in there, then you'd, uh, you'd never get them out. Or you'd have a hard time getting them out. All right, so let's bring this down a little bit. I'm going to use my straight edge that I'd already cut over here. And that way I don't waste any leather. Nobody likes to waste. Stuff's expensive. And during the virus thing, it's getting hard to get a hold of. All right. So that part is broken for you. Put the rest of my leather over there for later. Um, and then I'm just going to cut out my little scallop piece here too. Ready to go. Now, 
Um, like I said, I'm going to ba 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 basket weave this, okay? And so I need to spray it down with water right quick. I'm just taking a little aerosol type sprayer. It sprays a very fine mist and uh, getting her wet. And I'm going to saturate it a little bit more than um, I do during the tooling because I want it to, uh, I want that water to absorb while I uh, prep this thing, okay? Now, um, I'm done with this cutting board, so I'm going to go ahead and get it out of my way. And I'm going to put some tape on the back of this so that as I tool it, or as I stamp it, it does not stretch. Stretch is bad. Um, what it'll do is, as I'm tooling it, especially with when you're basket stamping or something like that, um, it will, you notice it starts to bowl shape up and that's it stretching um, with all the stamping and everything. And uh, anyway, it's very undesirable because it makes it to where your, your tooling pattern can get distorted, your project shape can get distorted. Um, yeah, it's just, if you can put a piece of tape on it or glue it to a piece of poster board or something like that, it'll do a lot better. A lot of people have luck um, with rubber cement and rubber cementing it down to a poster board or something like that. I personally don't like that method just because I don't want to take the time to rub the cement off the back of the leather when I'm done. Um, so what I do is I use this tape and I only use this kind of tape. I found, uh, I've, I've found it after lots of trial and error with different tapes. This is 3M, or sorry, not 3M, Scotch brand. Oh, I guess that is 3M. So 3M, Scotch brand, um, shipping tape, heavy duty shipping tape. It's, it also says packaging tape right there, but the big word there says shipping. And um, anyway, the reason I like this is because it's, it's good thick tape, so it doesn't allow that stretch. But also when, it, when you peel it off the back, it doesn't leave residue. And it doesn't like destroy the fibers of my leather. Residue being the biggest thing. There's nothing worse than peeling that off the back of something that maybe you didn't plan on lining. And um, now it, uh, it has all this sticky residue on the back of it. And you got to figure something out with it, you know. All right. Now, I probably should have done this before I taped it. But I need to fold this roughly in half. Or not even roughly. I need to fold it in half. And then just kind of give it a little... And then what I'm going to do is right up there in the very center of it, I'm going to put a little fingernail mark. And that will help me to realize where my tooling areas are, since I don't plan on tooling all the way across it. Uh, I'm just going to do a little panel on the front and a, a, a little panel on the back. Okay? So, I am going to take my uh my template here i need to be able to see through it so i'm going to go ahead and take the paper off of it i'm going to take this and i'm going to make a funny shaped little pattern that i can can uh, basket weave inside of all right so i'm going to just lay it like that and i'll take my stylus that i didn't bother grabbing yet you do have to make sure that you're laying real nice and flat across your leather. You don't, if it's crooked, you will definitely see it. So you want to make sure that this sucker is nice and straight. You can always lay it up against a straight edge or something like that. Um, I think I've got it about straight, so I'm not too worried about it. But anyway, I'm going to trace that little scallop. But I'm not going to go all the way to the edge of the leather. I'll stay about a half an inch away. I can always add in any lines um, afterward. Okay, so there I have that little shape right there. Now I'm going to flip this sucker around, and I'm going to do the exact same thing. And I'm leaving lots of room down here for my stitch line and, and stuff like that. Okay, I didn't just take it all the way to the bottom. Now I'm going to flip it around. I'm being very cognizant of where my center line is here. And I don't like tooling or bordering too close to a fold. Okay, you see that I'm way down south of the fold here with my, with my border line on this. If I had that higher than when I tried to fold this piece of leather to make it uh, into the notebook shape, what would happen is it would only want to fold on that cut line for that, for that border. So I try not to do that, okay? 
All right, so I've got it lined up perfectly with, with my leather. I've got it, um, this is probably three quarters of an inch down from that center point there. Okay, and I'm just gonna draw that same little lumper jaw there, okay? Now, I am going to grab my, um, when I see it, I'll think of the name of it, wing dividers, there they are. Grab my wing dividers. All right, get that thing out of my way so I don't hurt myself. Um, and I'm gonna draw my, my side border lines with my wing dividers. And then that'll be the border at which I cut. That looks about right. So there we go. That is the area that I will basket stamp. Now, I want to do the exact same thing on the back side. So I'm just going to repeat everything I just did real quickly. And I'm not going to talk a lot while I do it so that I can get it done faster. Um, and on the back side, I'm not going to basket weave. I'll just do a border and I'll put my maker's mark in there. again um, if you don't have a good set of wing dividers these are just um, an essential thing for drawing border lines and straight lines that are parallel to edges and things like that I can set a ruler up there and I can get pretty dang close maybe even so close that you can't tell if it's crooked but that wing divider is going to guarantee the accuracy so if properly used of course all right so now I'm going to cut out those two shapes with my swivel knife and I'm thinking I may even double cut them, as in make that into what's called a beaded border. Um, and I'm going to show you two different ways to do that. Okay? So here is the first way. Let's drop up my swivel knife here. Get it ready for action. Okay. Got these lines here. Straight lines are always fun. Some people have a lot of trouble with them, and uh, I don't know if you watched, but when I did that, um, I put my pinky on the edge of the leather, and I kind of let that be my edge guide as I as I pull through the leather. Okay, now I'm back to the last uh, last piece here. I'm gonna cut it, and then I'm gonna sh uh, show you how I do a double border with just using a normal swivel knife. Then I'll use on the other side what's called a um, beaded blade or beater blade, which is it'll cut two lines at once. All right, turn my radio down. It's probably pretty loud. Okay, so. Um, I used to try to eyeball this, but I never did get it right. So instead, I'm going to grab my little bitty wing dividers. See? Aren't those cute? And um, I'm going to run them inside the cut that I just made to make a parallel line. Like this. It's not the easiest thing in the world, but it can be done. I've got a few good screw-ups here, but luckily my beveling is going to cover those up. 
just places that I kind of ran off track because trying not to take way too much time on the video showing something that really doesn't have anything to do with the actual build of this little notebook because what if you didn't want to do what I'm doing all right now I can go back with my swivel knife again and cut that inside line I really like the, the, the double border, the beaded border on um, things that I'm basket weaving and, and stuff like that. It just really adds a little bit of extra flair to it that it's honestly not even noticeable when you're staring at this piece. But it's still, it's, it's just one of those hidden details that just makes it look nicer. So there we go. Looks like a little picture frame. All right. Now, on the other one, I'll show you the beater blade. Here it is. This one is a Tandy blade. It's a ceramic. And um, let's see if I can get to focus. You can barely tell. It has. get to focus on it there we go you can see that it has two parallel blades um, lots of different tool makers make these in all kinds of configurations and different um, widths of the blades and things like that this is the only one I own um, I'm just I don't do a lot of geometric stamping and stuff so I don't need a ton of different ones of these I'm going to strop it it is kind of hard to strop sometimes because really all you can sharpen or strop up is the outside of it blew all the green crap off of it all right now the trick with this blade um like on this one i drew the second line on the inside of the first line get this a little bit wet i drew the second line on the inside of the first line so that's going to actually present a little bit more of a challenge for me means i'm going to have to concentrate on this outside line but the the other blade will be on the inside of it if i had been thinking ahead of time i could have cut this or drawn this to where it was a little bit smaller and then i would use the inside line and then i wouldn't accidentally overcut borders on the edges um, like when i get over to here i can't cut too far in because i don't know yet when i turn to go south um, I, I don't know if i'm actually accidentally already cutting over the next border that i'm going to cut so, got to start a little bit away from the border, and I'm just going to follow it along with the right blade of the knife. Like that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and skip down and do this straight edge right here. And again, I'm not going all the way to the end because I don't know where those lines will overlap. And I don't want those inside lines to accidentally cut over each other. Okay last side and then I have to go back and connect all the lines okay so now I'm just gonna go back with my normal swivel knife and connect all those little lines on the ends
and sometimes when it's a smaller project like this I won't even break this thing out because it takes me longer to set it up than it does to just cut two lines um, granted I have a lot of control with my swivel knife and I do pretty well with it so I understand that you know maybe other people would be a little bit more hesitant to do it that way but that's what a whole lot of practice will get for you so on this side two individual lines on this side um, the beater blade and they look pretty dang close to each other so I'm, I'm happy now let's get ready to do some 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 stamping and stuff in here um, I'm not going to take a ton of time um, doing all this but I will explain some of the the basics and I'm going to cheat a little bit uh, if I can find the right tool here there it is all right this is a uh, Barry King push beveler love this thing when you're doing straight lines, it just really speeds up your beveling process. And I'll go ahead and do both sides at the same time just so I can save a little bit of time. Sometimes if this thing feels like it's chattering through the leather or getting a little bit stuck as it goes, I'll, I'll strop it up on my little strop board there and that'll help it smoothly slide through. All right, I'm not as good with this thing on curves, but I'm gonna try, because again, I'm trying to save some time. Otherwise, I'd just grab my bevelers and go to town on this bad boy. I also have one of these by Clay Miller, and I like it because of the head of it is a little bit more rounded. This one's kind of flat, so it is easier actually to do some of the turns. So, different tool makers, different techniques. And anywhere that you have a bad spot or something, you can always go back with a modeling spoon to kind of clean that up a little. All right, four more lines and we're gonna to get to doing something else. If you haven't watched many of my videos, I have to apologize for the background music, but I have a really bad problem with silence, and I will find myself talking entirely too much or whistling if I don't have some background noise. So, a little honesty from Aaron. <laughs> Alright, last line. Let's try not to screw it up too much. All right, there we go. So, put my little tool back up here. Um, for the border stamp, I'm just going to use a little camouflage stamp. No, I said that. I'm going to use an actual border stamp on it. But which one? Uh, I have a seven hole well, a seven hole border stamp from, from, from Barry King. I'm going to use it. It's just, it looks like a little camouflager with some seeds inside of it. If I could get it to focus. So we did just a second ago. Come on, buddy. 
amazes me how it focuses for a half a second and then goes out of focus. Grab my mall here. And all I'm going to do is, um, as a matter of fact, no, I'm not. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm going to basket stamp this thing first, and then I'm going to border it, because that's the order that I like to go in. So, I've got this here basket stamp uh, that I got from Barry King. It has the Army Star in it. And uh, since I'm making this notebook for myself, I figured I'll make this one. Come on, buddy. Focus. There it almost went. There we go. So, it's got the Army Star in it. So, to do my basket weave, I need a straight edge. And I'm just going to kind of choose a random angle that I like here. I'm going to draw me a straight line across it. And I'm going to, now you have to pay attention with this one, it's not ambidextrous. I can't turn it over and it'd be the exact same on both. So I have to make sure that the star is pointing the direction I want it to, which of course is up. There's the first hit of the day. Now I'm gonna, I just put the leg on that line that I drew and gave it a whack. Now I've turned it over, so I have to also turn my stamp over. And again, it's only because this is the, the, the Army Star, if it was, you know, a rope basket weave or something like that, I wouldn't need to worry about turning it over. I would just use it and it would be ambidextrous, I guess. Now I have overlapped the feet and kept it on that line right there. Now I'm going to turn it over again, turn it over, turn the stamp over again, and I'm just going to keep doing that until I have gone all the way across the project. Okay. Somewhere in here I may throw one of these in upside down, um, possibly on accident or possibly because I want somebody to find it. <laughs> Who knows? If I get towards the end and I've done a perfect job, I'll probably do it on purpose just for the heck of it. Okay, we're almost all the way across this line. Now, here I am at the very bottom, and luckily I have just enough room for this stamp to fully be on the leather. Because in a minute I'll have to show you what happens when your stamp is about to go to your borderline and what you'll have to do to avoid that. Now, now I'm done with all the turning, 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 turning of the tool and the, the project. Now I'm just going to take and fill in the gaps in between each hit. Okay? So I'm making sure my star is facing the way it needs to face. I'll set my stamp up here, overlapping the legs of the next row. Give it a whack. Okay. And I'm going to keep on moving. Just like that. Now I'm going to do one of these rows and then I'm going to show you how to, to, to manage it once you get up to the corner or to the edge, the border. And then I'm going to pause the camera so that I can basket weave this sucker and uh, you don't have to watch the whole thing. Okay. So, here I am right at the edge, and if I hit that stamp, it's going to go right over the border and look ugly, and it'll really ruin that nice border that I made. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to take it, I'm going to put it where it belongs, and I'm going to rock it back far enough that when I hit it, the impression just kind of goes up and away and doesn't get on my border. Now, this one, the border, they're not at a 90 degree angle. So I'm also going to rock it a little bit to the right there. And as you can see, I've got a partial stamp imprint right there. Now, this is why I go around it with a border tool, is because it'll cover up all those areas and it'll really clean up the work. So again, I'm going to pause the camera and I'm going to uh, do all my basket stamping on this side of the project. And when I come back, we'll talk about the border tool. All right. 
nice and stamped out. I got it pretty close to straight. Um, so now I'm going to use my border tool. Um, one of the things you have to be sure or be careful with when choosing a border tool is you want it to look right next to the basket stamp. Um, sometimes I see people using a giant border tool and a little bitty basket stamp or, um, or the exact opposite actually. Um, so anyway, I try to find one that fits the size of the pattern and the size of the basket stamp that I'm using. This basket stamp is actually a little bit larger than I like, but it, uh, it's the only Army Star one that I have, and I wanted to do the Army Star. So, all right, so to do my border tool, I'm going to start in the corner and just move along, slightly overlapping um, because it's the camouflage type tool. Just slightly overlapping each hit and uh, going down the line here. Okay, and I'll show you what that looks like right along there. So here you have the basket stamp without the border, and then here you have it with the border. And it really cleans it up and makes it look, um, look a lot nicer and a lot more professional. Okay, and that's why we use a border stamp. If I just let that kind of fade into nothingness, then... Um, it just wouldn't look as nice. I mean, this line over here doesn't look as nice as that area right there. Now, the other big thing with the border stamp, okay, let's say we got down to about a inch, inch and a half from the other side here, okay? Now, when I'm going down with my border stamp, I don't want to get to the end and find out that I have a stamp and a half left. Um, down here in this corner, that would be extremely noticeable. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and right in the corner, I'll just go ahead and give this thing a hit. Now, I will lightly press my stamp into the leather as I go back toward the area where this one was because if I need to tighten them up or space them out a little bit more, if I do it here, it's not near as noticeable as a half a stamp right there in the corner. And in this case, I do. I need to tighten it up a little bit. So I'm going to do a little bit more overlap than I normally do. And uh, that way I can fit an even number of stamps in there. So, you really can't even tell, but down here, these last four stamps are much closer together than all these others. Um, but again, if I didn't do that, and I got down there to that end, and I just did a half a stamp in the corner, you'd definitely see that. Okay? So now, I'm going to do the other sides exactly as I had done that. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing on this blank side over here. Because again, the only thing I'm putting in this side is going to be my maker's mark. So I'm going to pause the camera, and I'll take care of all that. And when I come back, we'll talk about constructing the, uh, the notepad. All right, so I did my border stamp around both sides, and then I threw my gorilla stamp right there, dead center in the back of it. Um, a lot of the time, I used to take my maker stamp and put it maybe on the inside of the notebook, but I love my gorilla stamp. And again, this is for me, so I'm putting it right square in the middle of the back because he commands respect. So put a couple of things away here and uh, we will get on with the next part of what we're doing. All right, so I've done all the tooling I'm going to do. I should grab a modeling spoon though and clean up just a couple of areas that got rough uh, with the uh, push peddler. So get a little modeling spoon, I'm just gonna Repress those areas down, and uh, yeah, like I said, that push bubbler to me is very hard to get around corners and or uh, rounded areas. So there we go. All right. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to turn it over and take the tape off the back. Again, like I said, I love this tape because it doesn't leave a sticky 
residue it just comes off pretty cleanly normally comes off in one piece but it just started ripping on me too so let's see if we can and then also one of the, the biggest things, you know, when you've done something that's going to stretch a lot like this, um, it does help to put it on the table to pull your tape off the back um, because it helps it, again, not to stretch as soon as you pull that stuff off. So if I lay it down straight there, oh, my phone's ringing. I will be right back. Sorry about that. Um, still got to take care of business sometimes. All right, so... Um, like I said, I want to line this little project, and um, see when that folds over, that's going to look so nice. Um, so yeah, I want to line it, so I'm going to take some super thin 2 to 3 ounce here, and I'm actually going to find, you know, all, all hides have a little bit of variation to them. So this piece right here has like a thinner area and a thicker area to it, and I'm going to cut these out of the thinner area that I can find. But you know what? First, I think this deserves some sort of finish. So let's um, let's grab a quick finish. Um, I do have up here in my cabinet. I don't have a lot of stuff over here in this shop, um, but up here in my cabinet, I have some of the uh, one-step leather dressing. There it is, and my favorite color of it, which is the uh, mahogany color. This is a great finish. It is super easy to use. Um, goes on really nicely. I don't have any paper, but I've got this scrap of leather right here from making a fanny pack, I think, for a video. All right, and then this one step, it's called one step because it's its own sealant, it's its own everything, okay? So, cut my sponge in half because it will ruin my sponge to use it. Um, so I don't need to use the whole dang thing. All right, I got the sponge just slightly damp. I don't need it wet by any means, but I need it nice and damp. Now what I love about this stuff is, the more you put it on, the darker it's going to be. Okay, so I'm gonna put it on with this sponge, and I mean, I'm just gonna slather it on there, just making sure that I don't leave um, streaks is the biggest thing. Okay, and then I'm going to wait a few minutes while we pause the camera, and when I come back, um, we're going to put on another coat. And we're probably going to do that two or three times uh, before I'm satisfied with the result. And uh, if you give me just a second, once I'm finished with this first coat here, I will show you a bag that's behind me that I use this exact same stuff on the tooled areas of the bag. And it looks just, I love it. Um, it's one of my favorite finishes, super easy to use great results all right so I gotta let that uh, dry for just a few minutes not very long at all I'll bring the camera up a little bit so that you can see what I want to show you um, which is the doctor bag that we recently made okay all the tooled accents on this bag I use this exact same finish and it really brings out a lot of color and um, stuff like that so I just absolutely love it all right um, so again I'm gonna pause the camera and then I'm going to come back once this first coat has got about 10 minutes of dry time to it and we'll do it again all right first uh, first uh, coat of that stuff is uh, good and dry now I'm gonna go back with my second coat and I'm gonna put it on very very heavily um, I'll, you'll see this stuff actually like foam up and all the tooling and everything and that's exactly what I want it to do um, a lot of finishes you try to keep them from foaming but this one I want it to because then it'll just as a, those bubbles um, pop I guess you could say um, I mean it just settles down in all the tooling and the cracks and the crevices and blah 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 so love the foaming action on this stuff Okay, and then when that dries, it'll be twice as dark as it is now. And I'm going in circles, but I'm uh, switching directions with my circles every once in a while because I don't want it to, let's say I'm going this way, I don't want it to leave the back sides of some of the tooling 
um, without any finish on them. So if I switch it around a little bit, all right, another coat, another 10 minutes. We'll be back. All right, so I went ahead and did a third coat. Wasn't really a reason to show you the exact same thing a third time there. Um, I do have a little bit of, uh, from when I folded this thing in half earlier, it, it stretched the leather so it creates wrinkles when you fold it back out. So that stuff actually distressed the, or makes the leather look a little bit more distressed in those areas. And honestly, that's cool with me because, you know, I, I want this thing to look kind of rustic. Um, so yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna look really good. Um, it's not as shiny as the camera is trying to make it, I promise, <laughs> but uh, that, that light's pretty powerful that's on this camera, so that's how that's working. Now, I'm going to, I told you I wanted to line this, so I'm, it's time to do that now. So I'm going to uh, get that piece of scrap out of the way. So here's how I line something like this. I'm going to take it and put it over my lining piece of leather. And I'm going to take a pen or pencil and I'm just going to draw me a nice big fat border around it and then I'm going to cut that out of my liner. <clears throat> I want my liner bigger because I want to glue it and then I'll cut the liner to size because that way I can make sure that all my edges are nice and straight and flat and, and all that. If I cut out a piece that's exactly the same size as my, uh, my finished piece here, I have a really good chance of not lining it up right when I go to glue it together. Okay, so. I'm going to turn this piece over because it does have some of that finish on it and I don't want that on my liner. Alright, <clears throat> so I'm going to spread glue all over the back of this piece and all over the back of this piece. Okay, so I have here some of our Maker's Contact Cement. There's lots of different brands of contact cement out there and they're all pretty decent but I really like the stuff we carry. Just to expedite things a bit, I'm going to lightly pour some of this on here. That's probably way too much, but that's okay. We'll share some of it with the other piece. And I just want to get it everywhere. So that's how I roll. Making messes. And it was indeed way too much. So what I'm gonna do is I'll hold this piece over my other piece and I'll just scrape it off onto it, all the excess. Let's see how well this works. <laughs> set my lining piece to the side for a moment whilst I spread glue all over this piece now. A uh, little hint with uh, contact cement and rubber cement stuff like that. If you accidentally get some of it somewhere that you don't want it, so like the front of my piece of leather, um, do not try to wipe it off while it's still completely wet like this. Um, let it dry for a little bit and then you can just roll it off. It just kind of peels off as you roll it with your finger like that. And um, yeah, if you try to rub it off while it's completely wet like this, what will happen is you're just going to force it down into the grain of the leather and stuff. And uh, yeah, you're going to have one hell of a mess. And uh, any finish work that you haven't done, if you were going to stain it still or something like that, um, will become extremely uh, ugly as it will not penetrate that area of the leather. All right, throw that to the side because it's got glue on it. 
I'm going to pause the camera for just a minute, maybe two, while this uh, cement is, uh, contact cement is uh, setting up and getting ready to stick together. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so it's been about two to three minutes, and that's plenty of time. I am going to set this sucker on here and start pressing them together. And then I'm going to use my little rolling tool to uh, finalize that seal. I want to push it nice and flat. I don't want any wrinkles, any bubbles, any surprises. Get my squeaky toy out here. This is how I press glued layers together. Show you a fun little difference here um, this is russet tooling leather this is what we started with it looked dark until we put the finish on it now it looks dark that's why I love this russet stuff it already looks like it's got some age to it but then you put a finish on it and man it does great <clears throat> all right so I'm gonna take a straight edge here I'm gonna take my ruler and set it up there along the edge of my finished piece so that I can trim off my liner. And I want this trim line to be right exactly on the against the edge of the finished piece. and trimmed up now I'll take my pockets and again this one's going to be on um, the front side here okay and this one will be on the back side here because it'll be where the notebook is held yep on the back side um, and all I'm gonna do is when I have these nice and positioned where I want them which is you know flush on three sides I'm going to take my fingernail and go right up under the corner here and just make a little mark with my fingernail. And that's where my glue line should stop. Okay, so I've just got these tiny little tick marks showing me where my glue line should stop. Um, that way I don't have exposed glue, you know, in the finished area of the project. I'll do the exact same thing on this side. Now, I'm going to take my jar of contact cement, and on only three sides, I'm just barely going to put a little bit along the very, very edge here. Just in the last, I'm going to try to make it three sixteenths of an inch, almost, almost a quarter of an inch. There is some play in this pattern, but not a ton. And the cool thing about this, this cement is the thinner you apply it, then the faster it is uh, ready to set up and, and use. So I'm going to put this on fairly thin, because I couldn't imagine that a little bitty notebook project is going to take an hour of video, but here we are. It's probably because I talk too much. But I want you to have the information. Alright, 
so there's those two pieces ready to go so we can get over here on our finished piece our uh, outside piece here now i am going to cheat and sew this on a sewing machine normally i'm very adamant in my videos about doing a lot of hand sewing on small projects because i don't want people to think that they need a sewing machine to do the things that i do so i uh, ordinarily i would love to hand stitch this i love hand stitching i enjoy it um, but again, uh, this video is running a lot longer than it should. I am the only one left at the shop now because everyone else has gone home for the day. And i um, sure it will be a matter of time before Janie Sue wonders when I am coming home. I want to make sure this glue line goes all the way out to the edge of the leather because it sure will make a prettier edge when I go to burnish and all that um, if it does go all the way out to the edge. It'll really make it to where the, the, the pieces combine and they don't look like separate pieces of leather on the edge. They look like one piece of leather. So. We'll let that set up for a minute and then uh, when we come back I'll stick those together and I'm going to sew them. Alright, so we're back. I'm going to check one more time to make sure which side's the front and which side's the back. Um, you know, there's my front, so I'm going to put the pretty scalloped pocket on that side. I'm just going to line up the corners, press it together. like it was made to be there all right exact same thing on the other side except here i have the flat um flat cut pocket there we go all right so i'm going to spin the camera around to my class 26 sewing machine there because that's the one i can reach without having to move um all the camera stuff and um, yeah, we'll stitch this thing together real quick and uh, then we're going to finish up the edges and we're going to call this project done. So here's some glue that got on it. And like I said, now that it's dry, I just have to give it a little rub and it rubs right off. There too. All right, so I'm going to pause this, move all the camera stuff, and then uh, we'll be at the machine. Okay, so there's um, two ways to uh, that we could sew this. We could just sew two little U-shapes, one on each end, or we could just sew all the way around it. And personally, I, I prefer to just go ahead and sew all the way around it. Um, first rule, using a sewing machine, I've got to check my bobbin, make sure i got plenty of thread to complete the project. I'm going to use my uh, drop-down edge guide here because it sure helps me uh, keep it straight in a hurry. Get my threads ready here, and uh, we're going to get to stitching. Now, when I am sewing something like this on a machine, I like to start on the back side, okay? And I like to start away, I don't want to start in a corner. I, I don't ever like starting to s my sewing in a corner, just because I feel like it's um, that's a high wear point. And I don't want a, a thread splice to be in that area. Uh, I could be just totally off my rocker and, you know, thinking crazy about that. But that's just how I've always felt about it. So here we are. For all you hand stitchers out here, here's the power of a machine. Um, it definitely makes quick, quick work of this thing. Um, one of my sales pitches when people are just not sure if they want to take the plunge into a machine as I tell them well if you do leather work for money whether it be your actual job or your side gig um, you know you can really increase production by having a machine I can make a whole nother notebook in the amount of time that it would have taken me to hand sew this one Didn't 
stop it with the needle down like I should have. That would have helped me make a 90 degree turn without issues. This natural colored thread looks really, looks like it's going to be really nice on here. So. Last couple of stitches and we'll get right back to where we started. There she be. She is sewn. So grab a pair of nippers here. And I'm going to go ahead and do the next part of this while I'm over here because my sander is right beside me. Um, and that is I'm going to sand the edges. And uh, that will get any glue and stuff like that off and it will take care of any areas where maybe the edges aren't perfectly lined up. And uh, yeah. So I'm going to move the camera just slightly over here. Unfortunately I have kind of a shortage of plugs in here so I'm going to have to reach across in here. Unplug that machine, otherwise I have to unplug the computer and I don't want the battery to die while I make a long video. Alright, so sanding leather. Um, this is a Cobra um, burnisher with the, the sanding attachment on one side. Um, it comes with two grits of sandpaper. This is the finer of the two. And um, to sand this, um, I just want to make sure not to create a lot of... Uh, a lot of friction and heat because if you use a lot of friction or heat it can burn the edge of your leather and not only does it smell terrible but then you have a hard time burnishing it later so I prefer to always keep it moving and not press on it at all really you're just kind of keeping it up against the wheel but you're not pressing against it so that you're not creating creating friction And what you're looking for is that right there. It's just a nice flat edge. Let's see if we can get to focus on that. There we go. Nice flat edge. You don't see layers of leather. You just see a flat edge. There's three sides. four sides. Alright, I'm going to pause the video and uh, we'll be back at the bench. Alright, I reached behind me and grabbed the little edger right quick. I'm going to knock all the corners off of this thing with this edger. And that's just going to make it to where when we burnish it, it'll have a much prettier look to it. If we don't take these corners off and you burnish them, then you basically the very edge of your leather will flop back on you and it just looks terrible. four sides of all four sides. Um, so now I want to, you see the color variation there? 
is from having you know gotten the finish from this side onto the edge in some places and not very desirable so what i want to do is i'm going to take a little bit of dye and i'm just going to dye my edges and that way when i burnish them they'll turn nice and dark and i won't have to worry about that so somewhere up here i have a little bottle of angelus uh dark brown or looks like it's coffee colored dye which i mean dark brown is dark brown to me so all right, so I'm going to show the same trick I always show when I do any kind of edge work, and that is uh, burning my uh, burning my dauber. Okay, so I'm going to take my lighter or a match or whatever, and I'm going to burn my dauber. Now, see how that looks like a burnt marshmallow now? All you have to do is just pull my trash can out so it falls in it. It's just knock that off with your finger. It smells terrible, by the way. If you have a small enclosed space like I do, go outside and do it or open a window or something. But, I mean, it's like burnt carpet, so it's, it's, it's not exactly something that smells good. All right. So, for anybody that doesn't know, Angelus, the little box that your die comes in, on the back is a little partition you can punch out, and then you can fit your die inside that area. All right. I am going to just get this right on the edge. Some people will burnish first and then dye afterward, but I feel like the burnishing um, uh, it really see, seals the edges and it makes it hard to get your dye uh, to penetrate. And I want my edges nice and dark. If I burnish this first, I don't think the edges would get as dark. Um, and I, I want them nice and dark. Last edge to go, and then I'll check and make sure I didn't make a mess anywhere. Um, this does take a pretty steady hand, which is an amazing thing, because I don't have a steady hand. I'm a shaker. But uh, you want to make sure not to drip any of it on the inside there. And um, that's the reason I burned down the dauber, is that really helps with that. Because it makes it to where it, uh, it you don't have a bunch of loose fuzzies and stuff hanging off your dauber. Okay, done with that, but I'm going to leave my little dauber on it in case I use it again in the next few minutes for whatever reason. Nothing worse than throwing away a dauber and then a minute later you got to grab a brand new one for the same color. Now, grab your favorite burnishing compound. Uh, I've got some Ron's Edge Rub here and a piece of canvas. Um, I use the Cobra Burnisher, you know, to sand this, but I don't really use it, I don't like to use it to burnish stuff. Um, I, I just really like hand burnishing. Doesn't bother me at all. Put this Ron's Edge rub right down this edge. And then we're going to make it pretty. what really brings out the shine and after I turn it over. And there is a nice shiny edge. Alright, I got four more sides to do. So, um, this project is done enough to call it done. Um, I greatly appreciate you watching. I uh, hope you learned a little bit of something from something I've said today. If not, I'm trying to figure out why you uh, <laughs> made it all the way to the end of the video. So, yeah. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to leave them in the, in the comments and I will answer them. If uh, you like what you've seen and you haven't subscribed to the channel already, I'd appreciate it if you do. We just hit 10,000 subscribers the other day. That was pretty exciting for us. 
So, anyway, um, as always, guys, I am uh, Aaron Heiser of Makers Leather Supply, and uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, make it with makers. Have a great day.